Coming up on this week in Torrance, the city's transit team shows off their latest free app to the Women's Club. And hundreds of models strutted down the catwalk at the Delamo Fashion Center. We'll tell you why. Then a 24-7 animal emergency hospital opens its doors with state-of-the-art technology. And the newly renovated Wilson Park Amphitheater has its first event. These stories and much more just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Julie Chan. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. Torrance City Manager Leroy Jackson announced the appointment of the interim police chief for the Torrance Police Department. Torrance Police Chief Mark Matsuda will retire in August after 30 years of service to the city. Michael J. Brown will step in as the interim police chief. Brown retired from the Torrance Police Department in 2011, but before that he served as a deputy police chief and held a variety of positions and assignments in the departments for 38 years. This included work as a detective, gang sergeant, watch commander, and special operations, to name a few. Brown says, quote, he is honored to once again serve the Torrance community and lead the finest department in the nation, end of quote. The Torrance Police Department currently employs 227 sworn safety staff and 128 civilian staff. The City of Torrance has a brand new website that gives you access to everything city related. The redesign concept for the new website was to create visually attractive pages, make it easier for people to find information, and help make frequently used pages more accessible. When you head to torrentca.gov, you're welcomed with an aesthetically pleasing home page. You have the option to take advantage of multiple tabs from information on community events, parks, library resources, and recreation services. Other tabs include Our City, Business, Government, and I Want To. The website also has a convenient I Am Looking For search bar for website users. The new web page captures why Torrance is the best place to play, work, and live. There is also timely information on the home page for users, including community events happening daily. There are also four subsites, Torrance Public Library, Arts and Venues, Economic and Development, and Torrance Transit. Catching a ride on the bus is a whole lot easier now thanks to a new app as well as other changes along the Torrance Transit System. Torrance City Cable reporter Edward Burt shows us just how convenient it is to hop on board. One of the big frustrations for bus riders and would-be riders is just not knowing when a bus will arrive. But a new app called the Transit app eliminates that frustration, says James Lee with Torrance Transit. This application actually gives real-time bus information, so when a patron is at a bus stop, rather than trying to guess when the bus may arrive or going by a paper schedule, they can pull out their smartphone. By using the application, they can then see the actual time that the vehicle will arrive at that stop. Members of the Torrance Women's Club were given a demonstration of the app during a ride to the harbor. It's easy to use after you download it, says David Mock with Torrance Transit. The app tells you where the nearest bus stop is located and how many buses are on the way. It uses your GPS location and it will identify where you are located. And based on your location, it'll tell you where all the bus routes that will service this stop. But the app isn't the only change to the system. New signs are going up at bus stops. They tell you what bus or buses serve each stop. They also have numbers so you can get a text on the next arrival. It changes based on traffic conditions and based on any uh, unforeseeable uh, conditions that are uh, happening on the street right now. And with real-time information available either through the app or the new bus signs, Torrance residents say they're glad that means less time waiting on the bench. I think it's a great idea. I've never really wanted to ride the bus because I didn't know where it was going or what time it would, you know, to come back. Oh, I think it's great. What I'm going to do is my daughter uses the buses all the time, and I'm going to tell her about it. You can also use the app on other bus lines, including Beach Cities and Metro, as well as Uber or Lyft. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Edward Mertz. Thanks, Edward. The Transit app is free. You can download it through iTunes or Android Play App Store. 
The Salvation Army is still looking for donations to help youth in the community. The Torrance Salvation Army is collecting monetary and backpack donations for their Operation Backpack initiative. Supplies include backpacks, notebooks, lined paper, folders, markers, sharpeners, and three-ring binders. Their goal is to collect 50 backpacks. The donation deadline has been extended to July 28th. Operation Backpack Distribution will take place at the Stillman Center, and many of the families who are recipients are from Torrance. They hope to provide backpacks for 300 children. Distribution will take place on August 5th, and to make a donation, you can call 310-370-4515 at extension 101. Still ahead, the community comes together for a concert at Wilson Park's newest amphitheater. Plus, we'll tell you why so many women came out to the Delamo Fashion Center and it wasn't because of shopping. The storks are bringing me a baby brother! Storks know how to keep kids safe. Aww. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know. <gasps> I know. You don't. <laughs> oh man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Making sure your child is in the right seat is one of the steps to safer travel. We can do this together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To know for sure that your child is in the right seat for their age and size. Remember when I was baby felt like one minute ago? What? Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. What he said. My favorite thing about music is it's reliable. It's always there. And it just helps me cheer up other people. There's nothing to worry about when you do music. You're just having fun. When I'm playing it, I'm like, wow, this is me. I sometimes just like shock myself. When you play music, you are playing life. If you ever need services during an emergency situation for your pet, well, there's a place in Torrance that will always be there. Access South Bay is open 24-7. The hospital is one of a kind. The services include critical care, soft tissue surgeries, internal medicine, and there are specialists like a neurologist to a radiologist. They use state-of-the-art equipment like an MRI system and can get results within minutes with in-house diagnostics. Their trauma center includes critical care specialists that can handle the most complex life-threatening situations as well as urgent care type treatments. Officials say they work just like a human hospital. In addition to that, we do in our surgery suite, for example, we have a large suite that does also have fluoroscopy. Um, you may hear it called fluoroscopy oh or C-arm. It's very similar to x-ray in the sense that you're getting an image from the inside out that you're gonna be able to see on the outside. However, it's actually moving x-ray. So we actually see motion. You can contact the Animal Hospital at 310-320-8300. Common Sense producer and host Laura Fong will take a closer look inside Access South Bay on the next episode airing in August. Wilson Park was full of excitement and musical tunes as the band Mystic Wave took to the stage. This annual event was extra special this time. The concert in the park kicked off with a dedication ceremony with Mayor Patrick Fury, council members and city officials of the new amphitheater at Wilson Park that was recently renovated. The enhancements include a widened stage, a signature design element over the stage, greater power supply, and four audiovisual towers that expand sound and light capabilities to enrich the performance. It can accommodate um, any kind of performance now, Sa you know, music, live music, dance, films, and also rentals, weddings, really anything you want to do. I would like to add that I think this community of uh, space is going to be a wonderful asset and going to provide a lot of great high quality programming. And we're excited to have it. The band Mystic Way performed at the city's annual concert in the park event, which took place at the newly renovated gazebo. Attendees came out with family and friends and took a seat as the band performed. Mystic Wave is a community outreach band associated with Sokagake International, the band that is made up of nearly 20 members perform both fun and funky tunes that are a blend of jazz, Latin, and old school soul styles. They pursue a mission of spreading waves of peace and bringing people together through music with the Buddhist concept of many in body, 
one in mind. The next event at the new amphitheater will be performed by Shakespeare by the Sea, who will perform Macbeth. Hundreds of women made their way to the Salomo Fashion Center in hopes of becoming the next face of the plus-size fashion company, Torrid. Models posed for the camera and waited for their time to shine in a private room as they auditioned. This is the third year in a row the company has put out this kind of open casting call. The popular fashion brand is known for their plus-size apparel and their simple message to empower women of all sizes to wear what they love. The first city they visited was Torrance. Company officials say they're looking for models age 18 or older who wear sizes 10 through 30. Women showed uh, off their modeling skills to representatives of the brand and met with Torrid 2017 model search winner Maria Jimena, along with judge and supermodel Candice Hufin. We really wanted to create this event because we feel that we serve our customer. We want uh, to speak to them and to let them know that they are just as important to us as uh, they, they feel. And we want to make sure that we have someone who is one of them to represent the girls out there. Face of Tour 2017, Maria Jimenez shared some tips for people trying out. So the people here today at the live castings or any of the castings that are coming up or for anything that matter, it's just to pursue your dreams with confidence because at the end of the day, they're your dreams and you have this, you have this desire, so pursue it. There are four more cities the company plans to stop at before narrowing down the candidates to the top ten. Once they narrow it down to four models, America gets to choose the best model. The winner will receive a Torrid modeling contract and wardrobe. Torrid carries apparel, accessories, swimwear, lingerie, and footwear for plus-size women. This year, they expect more than 15,000 women to apply. The famed Dine LA food event is underway and one restaurant in Torrance is taking part. Popular Gaikaku Japanese barbecue restaurant is offering a $20 per person lunch menu. Customers have the option to choose one appetizer and select three barbecue meats. Once you're satisfied with your entree, their two-piece s'mores dessert will be brought out. Dine LA Restaurant Week is a biannual event to introduce diners to the wide range of restaurants in neighborhoods throughout Los Angeles County. People can enjoy specially prepared prefixed menus. It, all, it has already started and will continue through July 28th. Head to discoverlosangeles.com where you can make reservations. And local residents have a new yoga boutique to call a sanctuary, and it's located in Old Torrance. <laughs> yoga Harbor opened its doors six months ago, but the owner, Bethany Eanes, says this is their official entrance to Torrance, and with council members Heidi and Ashcroft, Jeff Rizzo, and Torrance Area Chamber members by her side, she received a certificate to welcome her into the community, making the ribbon cutting event even more special. Eanes brings a more down-to-earth approach to the practice with creative prop work and innovative sequencing. The charming studio sits on Gramercy and Cabrillo Avenue, which Eanes hopes will mean tons of foot traffic and many local yoga enthusiasts. We have a lot of yoga here in Los Angeles, but most of it is concentrated around the beach neighborhoods. And we really believed that people in Torrance wanted a neighborhood studio, not a gym, but a true neighborhood yoga studio. Um, and when we opened our doors, we found out that was true. A lot of people tell us they were driving to the beach for yoga and they're just happy to be able to do it now in their own community. We have classes for all levels. Um, whatever your experience is, you're welcome to come in. Classes whether you want to build strength, flexibility, uh, get your sweat on, or just come in and relax and take a load off. We're here for you. The Yoga Harbor is offering a special for all new students, three classes for $20. To find out more about this new studio, visit theyogaharbor.com. And there was another warm welcome for a business that reopened. The Barrister Executive Suites on Hawthorne Boulevard has a new updated look and is ready for business. The company celebrated the grand reopening with Mayor Pat Fury, a few council and chamber members in a special ribbon cutting ceremony. Barrister offers full service office spaces for the, those looking to grow. They provide their customers with conference and meeting rooms, a receptionist to answer calls, and their very own office in what they describe as a cost effective and convenient alternative to conventional space. They have 30 executive suites in the Southern California area.
We recently invested in modernizing our workplace and expanding our facility here and so we are very pleased to have our grand reopening today and showcase our offices and work with the Torrance Chamber to, to grow new businesses. The company also offers a professional receptionist to answer the phone and handle office needs. You can have 24-7 suite access and security. There are three locations in Torrance, 21250 Hawthorne Boulevard, 3868 and 3838 Carson Street. Schmog City Brewery staff and patrons cheered to supporting the environment and community with their recent partnership with a global nonprofit. Owners Laurie and Jonathan Porter invited guests to join them in recognizing a new relationship with 1% for the Planet by hosting a launch event. The organization partners businesses with nonprofits who support and protect the planet. And now Smog City will be donating 1% of their gross revenue to help with their efforts. To take it a step further, a portion of the proceeds from the launch event will go to another nonprofit Food Forward, a Los Angeles-based organization who recovers produce that would otherwise go to waste and donates it free of charge to agencies who feed the hungry all over Los Angeles County. The business has already been working with Food Forward for three years. 10% of the proceeds from all the beer sold tonight is going to Food Forward, which is an amazingly generous gesture on their part. And it was a way to see the facility and just meet and greet the community that just call this place home. So I'm here to, to represent the Food Forward crew and to say thank you to Lori and her husband and just to, um, to show that local small partnerships work in nonprofit and small businesses and we need more of them. During the festivity, the collaboration Beer Comquat Saison was offered to patrons. This beer represents the partnership with Food Forward where waste, community activism, and craft beer go hand in hand. Last year, Food Forward rescued over 50 million pounds of produce across Los Angeles that otherwise would have gone to landfills. The porters say this partnership shows customers that Smog City is more than just a business. To stay up to date with the brewery, visit SmogCityBrewery.com. A member of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce hosted a business mixer for the community. Members mingled and learned more about the Schweitzer Learning Center where the mixer took place. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce has been doing mixers for more than 20 years. It's an opportunity to learn more about the various and diverse types of businesses that are in this community. The Schweitzer Learning Center represents 10 school districts and is a school that helps students with learning. This event is about thanking uh, the people from the chamber that know us and introducing us to the ones that don't. There are many here that uh, really did not know that we existed and who we were. And unfortunately, we're one of the best kept secrets in the South Bay. When you have a child with special needs, it's often that there's a little bit of shame involved in it. And so people don't really brag about having come to Schweitzer Learning Center. But many people, when I go to events, will say, oh, I have this neighbor or my grandson or whatever. The Schweitzer Learning Center has been part of the chamber for more than 40 years. Pizza Hut announces that it's looking to hire across the country. The popular pizza company wants to hire 14,000 new drivers this year. The positions will be permanent and be a mix of full and part-time. Officials say that about 3,000 will be added each month for the rest of 2017. Pizza Hut will soon have a new technology system to improve the reliability and accuracy of its deliveries. The Pizza Hut location on Pacific Coast Highway and Artesia Boulevard here in Torrance are both looking for delivery drivers. If you're interested in a job opportunity, you can apply at jobs.pizzahut.com. El Camino College students will soon be using their STEM skills to battle a simulated fire. The college announced that its industry and technology division is partnering with Northrop Grumman Aerospace Systems to sponsor an exciting event coming up called the Global Innovation Summit. It's an intern and student demonstration activity similar to a live action video game. Five teams from El Camino College and Hawthorne High School students along with Northrop Grumman interns will battle together to save the world from simulated wildfires 
ravaging the planet. They'll accomplish this using RC planes, quadcopters, and others that they designed. At the summit, wildfires will be represented with six-foot-tall fabric flames on a football field-sized map of the world. Each vehicle has a critical and unique role to extinguish the fires as each of the teams use technology and cooperation to support the simulated disaster relief exercise. The summit will take place on July 28th from 9 a.m. to noon at El Camino College's Murdoch Stadium. It's free and open to the public. With summer here, local allergists are seeing a shortage of an important product needed for allergy patients. Edward Mertz reports. Right now, there is a shortage of insect venom uh, extract that we use for allergy shots. Those allergy shots have been effective for decades, helping people to boost their immunity to stings from honeybee, wasp, yellow jacket, hornet, and other types of insects. But the supply of medicine has been dwindling since October when one of the two companies which produced the extract shut down after federal investigators found contamination. As a result, long-term care is on hold for many people, says Dr. Katie Marks Kogan with South Bay Allergy and Asthma. We currently do have patients that are receiving allergy shots for venom allergy, and we feel confident that we'll be able to continue their shots without interruption. However, because of this shortage, there are some people who may not be able to start the therapy. The shots take three to five years to be effective. Dr. Marks Kogan says right now one of her patients is not able to get the treatments which require scientists to extract the venom by hand from millions of individual insects. And she says if you are stung, you'll find out quickly if it could be life-threatening. It will almost always occur immediately. So within, within 30 minutes. And if you find out you are at risk from the stings, she says, get an EpiPen. It's the only life-saving medication that can be used in this situation. If you or someone you love is at risk of a severe reaction from a sting, you're gonna to wanna to keep an EpiPen with you. They're easy to use. You pull off the cap, plunge the orange needle into your upper outer thigh, count to five, and then you get to an emergency room as fast as you can. Obviously just to monitor that that immediate medication helped you in that moment. And to make sure you don't have another immediate reaction. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Edward Mertz. Thanks, Edward. Doctors are estimating a 25 to 30 percent drop in the supply of venom extracts. Honda has recalled more than a million of their vehicles due to a potential danger. Nearly 1.2 million Accord vehicles produced between 2013 and 2016 are being recalled after receiving multiple reports of the car's battery sensors causing fires in the engine. The sensors, which notify drivers when there is a problem with the battery, may not be sufficiently sealed against moisture. As a result, substances like road salts can enter the sensor and cause it to short, causing a fire. So far, no injuries have been reported. Honda plans to notify affected owners by the end of this month. And still ahead, we've got some great upcoming events you won't want to miss. We'll be back in just 60 seconds. Don't go away. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? <laughs> It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Really? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top. Soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little it's like bruised? Great. It's good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time.
Welcome back, everybody. Here are some upcoming events to mark on your calendar. First, you can buy tickets right now for the annual Honda Evening Under the Stars Gourmet Food and Wine Festival. The event will take place on August 26th and will benefit Vistas for Children, Inc. That is a philanthropic organization that is committed to helping children with life challenges. You can enjoy live performances and samplings of the best food in the South Bay. For tickets, go to Facebook.com slash Evening Under the Stars. And the Torrance Roseblood Association is having a fundraiser at Hoff's Hut in Torrance on July 27th. It will take place all day. You can head to the TorrenceRosefloat.org for the flyer. Then, Movies in the Park is hosting another night of fun. You can stop by the Portola Park on July 29th to watch Finding Dory. Bring your picnic basket, blanket, and lawn chair for the entertainment. The movie will begin at 8 p.m. That does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Julie Chan. Thanks so much for joining us.